suggestion that they kind of... Yes, indeed. I saw a recent study in Oakland that cited that the cost of each parking station at Park Mode Station was around $35 per dock once you put maintenance, construction costs, land costs. So I think things like this can be a lot cheaper. Do you mean per car? I mean per car. You get the need, and then mainly in land costs. And it's quite bad to have only a valuable land, especially in the in a city or into city train stations, just being taken up all day by a car just come on. Just sitting there for 95% of the day. And you're suggesting that the cost of transporting people free, actually free, is going to be worthwhile. Yes, I mean, studies have shown that the biggest barrier to efficient and fast public transport is getting the minimum number of people. And if schemes like this can increase the number of people in their free to pay for more, and I can make an entire system to that. Finally, you've talked about things yourself, do you not? Yes, that's right. I believe that walking in space is all using a space thing on the site, and I look forward to being here. Do you mean uh, Australia joining New Zealand or the other way around? Oh, yeah, I live on the Western Island, has a nice crew for it. And you are the Western Island of New Zealand. Why not? You and me from maths and physics. Newcastle University doing his PhD. And so does someone on the other end of the academic pyramid, the stratospheric one, to see how well you are when you actually do get to work. Professor Brian Carol Black is head or principal of Newnham College in Cambridge. She's also led most of the medical bodies in the UK and shared an inquiry into health at work with the late Andrew Frost. The aspect of my being looking at, and really over four or five years, is how do you ensure that the working age population is healthy, that both physical and mentally healthy, that they have resilience, that they are engaged in their workplace, and that they are well managed. Unless you get those things aligned, then you're very often going to have unhealthy workers who will not be able to perform well. And whether you're in the United Kingdom or whether you're in Australia, these things matter to governments, whether they're state governments or central governments. People are interested at government level in a really high class workforce. Well, the main workforce is sort of got facilities that come in for form vaccinations, this and this, this and that, you can use sort of donate blood. But you want to see people in the country where you work. Are concerned about your health? Why doesn't it happen? I think it shouldn't happen because we've all thought health belongs in our family care with our general practitioners. I think in workplaces, people have been very concerned about safety but haven't realised that you are a safer worker. If you are a healthier worker, specifically, and mentally healthy. And I think what's been happening in the workplace is that people are add on. The things you've just said, like a bit of immunisation, perhaps the food you yeah, perhaps have to stop smoking. But it's very more recently that people have decided you must develop proper programmes so that these things are integrated. And in the really great organisations, they integrate conventional occupational health and safety with all these extra things about well-being, about engagement. They start to have a programme that is together. So there's a difference between the sort of compliance culture where the firm or the institution is sort of protecting itself in case there's asbestos in the ceiling or in case you lift up your package uh, in the wrong way and they're going to pull out as opposed to trying to keep healthy in a way that is going to make a difference for them. The clients have always thought that your health is a very personal matter, there's a great worry about are you getting too close to the private things, 